Welcome again to the Marketing Study Guide. In this video, we will be looking at how we interpret a multi-dimensional perceptual map. This is what this particular type of perceptual map looks like. You should note that in the grey, different brands and products have been listed. In the other unhighlighted areas are the actual attributes. So from a survey, consumers have rated both uh, or all the brands on a scale of each of these attributes. Normally we just pick a couple of them, say trusted and uh, modern or something like that, and they would form our two axes of a traditional perceptual map. This map allows us to see the overall market with all the attributes listed at the same time. First thing we can use it for is to identify competitive sets by grouping uh, the brands or products that are close together into sets. This allows us to see how the consumers see and classify the, the various brands. The next thing we can look at how strongly or we are associated with particular attributes. Now in this data set that I've used to produce this map, basically we have trusted being very highly associated with coke, but also very highly associated with water. However, when you look at the other attributes, they're quite different. So on the map, water and coke are, are positioned uh, away from each other because they're not overly similar products, but they both share the attribute of trust. So that's why that sits in the middle. Then we could look at attributes that are only associated with one particular brand, okay, where they sort of own that particular dimension in the in the consumers' minds. So in this case, Pepsi next and Modern because it's fairly new, Pepsi and Sweet, etc. So they are basically owned only by that brand and become a clear point of differentiation. Okay, and we could also see how a different category view can affect perceptions. What I've done here is I've removed water from the data set and I've rerun it just using soft drinks. And we have a, a different map, a slightly different map, not overly different, produced because water is no longer here. And as a result, the, the trusted dimension has shifted right down. So when we only look at uh, the soft drink market, uh, we can see that uh, there is a different view. So as we, as the consumer considers a broader set of indirect competitors, such as water and juice, they will get a different view. Okay, so basically that's how you use this particular map. As one more example, I've included some data that I've run for pasta or spaghetti that you would buy in a supermarket. And I've just labeled the brands A, B, C, and I've got a, again a range of attributes that the, each brand has been scored upon. And I can do the same thing. I can see who the competitors are, how differentiated they are, and what, the, what are they associated with, and what's the connection between the, the attributes. So as you can see, I've gone through for brand A and C. They have a very clear defined target market. F is down here by itself, not associated with anything, so that's quite poor positioning. This is a, a smaller part of the market, special dietary concerns, so they have a very niche position. B is our, our market leader in this particular uh, data set. And as you can see there, they are around trusted, quality and easy to use, as well as tasty. So they are very well positioned around very important attributes. And then we have some gourmet end of the market. We've got three brands in there, the higher end, and their authentic good meal and variety. So by mapping all the data at the one time, I end up with a very good sense of the overall market, and it becomes a far more effective tool than the traditional two-axis approach. Keep in mind that this data can be, or this sort of perceptual map can be produced off the website. There's a free template that is... Uh, uh, ready to download and very easy to use. So good luck.